Hey, hello guys. Welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Uh, today, today is an important session where I have a dear friend and a very skilled data science professional, Ankur Verma, with me. Ankur has uh, introducing Ankur. Ankur is a graduate from IIT BHU, and he has over a decade of experience working in companies like Mu Sigma, WNS Global, Walmart, Dunzo. Samya.ai and Amazon. And post that, he has started his entrepreneurial journey with True Gradient, where he is working as a co-founder and CEO. So welcome, welcome, Ankur, to the channel. Thanks a lot, Abhishek. Hey, hey guys. So nice to meet you all. Uh, so Ankur, like before we start your entrepreneurial journey and your professional journey, we will we'll deep dive into it. But before that, I have a very basic question which is how you get, uh, got started with data science. I know that you used to participate and I guess still you do in hackathons like analytics with Dia and Kaggle, but how it all started you know, your journey with data science? Yeah, yeah, Abhishek. So uh, back in 2012, 13, while I was uh, in my college time, so that time ML was not a very common thing, but analytics was coming up and a lot of uh, decision making was enabled by analytics. So at that point of time, companies like Ms. Sigma, Fractal.ai, Sweden. So these were the companies which were just coming up, right? And uh, I did a lot of case studies during my college final year and was very convinced that I wanted to do analytics because it was closer to uh, statistics and mathematics as well, which was my stronger point back then. And then once I entered the corporate world there, I came across some platforms like Kaggle, Analytics. So the analytics were just starting that point of time and that was the only source of learning for data science. So I just started delving into it, solving some problems, and and these are the platforms where in top data scientists or the top PSG people uh, build solutions and put their in terms of in, in terms of methodology and code. So that's where I started learning it, and uh, yeah, got deeper into it, and uh, here here we are today, uh, doing a lot of ML problems. Yes. And uh, Ankur, one question: like, uh, how much similarity and dissimilarity you find in the problems that you are solving in this platform versus the actual uh, industry problem that we solve? There is a, a lot, a, a, I would say a, a, a good good amount of difference between these competition problems versus the real problems because what these competition problems allows you to do is more to understand more from the theoretical standpoint because I always believe that theory is a very, very important thing to know before you start implementing into the practical world. So it allows you to understand the algorithms well it allows you to, you know, do experimentations which are simulation based and can be done using computers, using some of the code that you are writing in the Python and C++, right? But when it comes to real world problems, like as an experience at Walmart, wherein you are talking about scale, like a, like when you talk about like Walmart, then you're talking about $500 billion sales, right, over there. And when you're trying to build a solution over there, then you need to bring, bring this theory and apply a lot of other uh, optimization over there to be able to solve those problems. So there is a gap uh, or there is a difference between when you're solving uh, in theoretical versus in the practical world. All you need to be aware of is be able to smart enough to be able to understand that what uh, what, what has to be applied where in terms of applications, right? True. I, I completely agree. Like when you are learning a topic, when you are learning a theoretical concept, it's very nice to get one of these data sites and, pra and pra practice in that. But when it comes to the actual industry problem, you need to deal with the scale and uh, like all those things, the production issues and everything. Production issues, scalability, that's right. And uh, so Ankur, like whatever, whichever companies we work with, the projects we deal with, the domain we are working on, uh, shapes our career and we sometimes become a master of a particular domain and all. So would you like to tell us like what kind of problems and uh, like type of domains you work across these different companies from the very beginning and how it shaped your career and made you who you are today? Absolutely. There are two types of problems or two types of companies I would say in which I have uh, spent a lot of time in my career. Like 70% of my career has been spent in, I would say, in the areas where I have called supply chain problems, very deep supply chain problems. While at Walmart, I remember, uh, yeah, I used to travel to U.S. Like I've been to U.S. for four times, bring, going to the the way exact decisions, like visiting the uh, distributed centers. We're talking about like 50,000 square feet, 60,000 square feet distributed centers and trying to see the entire uh, perspective or entire way in which the supply chain works, right? So my career has been oriented towards a lot of solutions a lot of AI, building AI solutions in the supply chain area, 
when you talk about supply chain, it comes to right from the raw material creation, right? And from the raw material creation to the final, uh, you will say the tertiary sales, which we call about when the consumer purchases the items, right? So there comes the complexity of raw material creation. Then you apply logistics to be able to fill it into different types of distribution centers. And then from there, it, it goes into the retailers at a very high level. And then it, and the customers uh, uh, purchase that. So this is a very high level process, which is like uh, at a 13,000, 14,000 square feet higher. And over here, to be able to optimize all of these processes or all of these places requires deep optimization techniques, right? So I have touched a bit of it in terms of replenishment, wherein I have done a lot of understanding around what is the right, uh, what is the days or inventory of a particular item sitting in a particular DC or a retailer? What should be the right pricing to be able to liquidate an item or to be able to understand what 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 should be the right markdown amount that we should be giving? So supply chain is one area wherein I've spent a lot of time, right, five, six years of my time. There's another domain of personalization. Like just before this, I was working at an at Amazon, where I was sort of heading the uh, Amazon Pay. Uh, when you when you're talking Amazon Pay India, you're talking 65 million customers who are active at a given point of time. So what is the right offer that you should be giving to a customer? It's a deep optimization problem again. It requires machine learning optimization along with that dynamic programming based optimization to be able to estimate that hey, if Abhishek is gonna be doing Uber tomorrow, then I should hold back on some offers because there I can win some money versus if he's not going to do, let's say, some Swiggy, then I can provide 20 bucks more for that offer. So that's that's, uh, that's called personalization and personalized marketing. That's where I have also uh, like archived two papers, like it did not get published, but consumer choice modeling using neural network architecture. So a couple of my papers are also in the similar direction. So yeah, that's where my career has been along. Sure, sure. Very interesting. And uh, you have also worked in Samya.ai, which was more into auto ML, right? right? So would you like to yes, right. uh, give a brief to the audience what auto ML is and what was your work around it? Absolutely. I've been, uh, so that was from the problem solving perspective. Like the previous thing was like, what kind of problems I've solved, what kind of business understanding I've taken. But one thing that I always believed right from my college time is automation. So automation is a, has been a very fundamental norm and like a very fundamental thing in my life. So always, whenever I have approached a problem, that's why the uh, competitions, I would have done like 60 plus ML competitions in the past, like 10 years, 60 to 70, yeah, definitely uh, competitions in my past. So, uh, it, and every weekend I will do competition, like that was the norm. So what I always believe, doing so many competitions, I always believe that, hey, uh, I have written, let's say I have written a particular set of code, Python or C++ based ML code right over there. I always believe that uh, we can reuse them, all of these parts, right? And how you reuse them is to be able to apply to different types of data sets is automate the dif different scripts. And when you talk about machine learning, so it's not a simple like Python based uh, code which you are just applying. It's, it's a learning, right? It's a training that happens over there. So when, when the training happens and there are a lot of parameters involved into it. So let's say when you are training, a, even a shallow neural network, you're talking about 20,000 to 30,000 parameters. Deep neural network might go to a billion parameters, as an example. We talk about a lot of chat GPTs and different types of transformers over there in today's world, right? So what I used to do, like uh, have been focusing over since past six to seven years, has been able to automate these parameter learning of the machine learning processes, right? Even while at Walmart, while I was working at uh, replenishment solutions, right, for supplies and solutions, so every time when the model runs, there are two things which can happen. One, data drift in itself happens because data is sensitive and everything is changing. Every day, everything changes, right? Then the data drift is fundamental problem, which, which always appears. Secondly, a lot of times, a lot of anomalies happen, right? Which is not a data drift, but but something happened in somewhere, then how do you tackle those anomalies, right? So somebody cannot go ahead and make tweak those changes, those parameters every day in and out. So how do you write algorithms, right, to be able to adapt your machine learning solution to that. So that's what auto machine learning in my mind is, right? And then the, the second fundamental, which uh, which I think is a common norm, is like, uh, like yeah, you have 20, 25 algorithms for solving a problem. You build all these, bring all these 20, 25 automated algorithms together, let the model figure out how much, uh, which model and how much to be used at what point of time or what type of data. It is. So yeah, that's, that's, that's why, that's how I describe auto machine learning solution as. Sure. And uh, automation comes very naturally to us engineers. 
and also like when we are solving a problem sometimes we get biased towards a particular model but when it's all automated let the let let the automation figure out which is performing well depending on the problem statement exactly right absolutely uh, i'm good now now a bit tricky question <laughs> you have been in so many companies sure. if, you have, if you look back which would you consider the best experience oh uh, it's a tricky question absolutely very tricky question but in ter- there are two types of experiences which i have had in my career and which has given it has probably brought me to where i am trying my own entrepreneurship journey being confident enough to be able to solve problems by myself being uh, uh, and obviously with the team along here and give direction one is obviously has been walmart for me it has been an integral part of my walmart where i have learned uh, every fundamental uh, norms of Firstly, how do you think about problem solving? Like that's the first thing which I learned over there, right? How do you think about scale? Because you're not talking about like you're talking about like six thousand stores, like five hundred thousand active items for competition kinds of thing, right? Over there. So you know, like so, how do you think about scale? How do you think about problem solving? Thirdly, most importantly, I learned over there how neural network kind of architecture. Like by in twenty seventeen, that was the first time when I actually implemented this. particular type of solution into uh, into my practical norm which was how neural network can play an important role at such such scale so walmart has been one of the most significant uh, career building thing in my life yes uh, over there secondly from auto machine learning perspective like where did my auto machine learning pick up and uh, you know where i got that into perspective was samya.ai yes wherein uh, i was responsible for building the neural architecture uh, solution for uh, demand planning or demand forecasting at that point of time so there it was all automated and there uh, a lot of engineering and scalability came into perspective and i became more of a machine learning engineer plus science guy at that point of time so yeah and how would you define the difference between a person who is applying modeling versus an ml engineer so basically data scientist and ml engineer do you see them as two different uh, uh, trajectories or do you think that a person should be good good enough to do both both modeling as well as think from production perspective be, being a ml engineer himself but what do you what do you think my point of view abhishek is like i i have always like since past 5 6 years during my walmart days itself i i my one of my goal of my objective when i used to talk to my managers my objective was to to acquire the mle skill into me so i all i have always felt that M- that much there is there, there is no fundamental difference in today's world in mle's job versus the data science job because if you have to solve a data science problem i say engineering is an integral part of it if you are lacking engineering that means you need to spend step back spend time over a learning simple basics of data structures and algorithms to to start off with i would say learn that thing then go ahead and understand a bit of uh, how do you scale things how do you parallelize your models how do you think about different types of cloud platforms right and then uh, writing different types of script on the ai pipeline front right and then you uh, implement your science part right so uh, i think that in today's world or uh, my belief is that mle is the thing is 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 what which i would say is, is equal to a data science and yeah everybody should aspire to be mle right true true even i agree that uh, i was actually doing some reading around once this chat gpt and bard has come now most of the researches are going around the scalability part of it for example flash attention how can you optimize gpu for faster attention and all those things are we can't see them as separate things they have all become one we need to understand the theory that where the magic of attention coming and how can we optimize it for gpus for faster scalability and all so actually both of them goes together we can't see them as a separate track even i believe the same absolutely i always feel that uh, like if somebody has to like a lot of people uh, i interact with are starters of uh, data science and i talk to a lot of i give some talks when talk in, uh, get an opportunity to talk to people even while at amazon there were a lot of freshers who come to amazon right so my only instruction like two bits of instruction used to be that hey go ahead and understand a bit of mathematics a bit of calculus and a bit of statistics first because that gives you a perspective of what you are doing over there right and i have always been a believer of writing uh, creating your notes of a subject uh, that's what my belief that's what i have followed in my past yeah like 20 years of my studying career i would say like write notes and you know that that builds up a lot so uh, i mean today i have like three to four copies with just is just with his machine learning that's all like 
right from the basic statistics of Stanford courses of Robinson to uh, like you can talk about gross neural network, like the complicated transformer GPT actor. I always believe in making notes and trying to depth of the algorithms, right? If it's a transformer model, then trying to understand each and every part of the mathematics which is going into it, spending six hours, seven hours just to figure out that. It's a very useful exercise is what I personally feel because when you're solving the real problem, then it allows you to give that, uh, that gives your perseverance, right? And that patience to be able to build those solutions in a very understanding way. Yeah. Yeah, thanks and good. That will be really helpful to the audience who are listening to this, that if the fundamentals are clear and uh, the tip that you gave of making notes will definitely help our audience. So we will talk more about generative AI and a lot of other things. But before that, tell us about True Gradient. What is it and like how it all started? Yeah, right. So as you have already uh, started off with was the auto ML thing. So uh, the, the spark of auto ML machine learning and my belief of solving problems using auto machine learning has been existing since past 2018, since 2018. So it's been five years since I've been thinking about this. I've been talking to a lot of people, spent time in, like while at Walmart, I, I was reporting to, my manager was in US, so I used to travel to US at that point in time and used to talk to some of the folks from Stanford, like like MIT, so these kinds of people. So I will always felt that, uh, that there are problem statements which is existing, right? And whenever we approach these types of problems and we get like we start from basic zero, right? We start coding, we write the first line of the code over there and start building solutions. So uh, like knowingly, unknowingly, we take first six months just developing some of the basic fundamental code, setting up the infrastructure and everything, right? So that was the first gap which I always wanted to work over and hence uh, a solution like true gradient kind of thing, which allows any particular system today. Uh, so firstly, what is true gradient? So true gradient is, created with a vision or today it is like a self-serve AI and a totally no-code platform for solving supply chain problems because that's where our expertise lies, like problems like demand planning, inventory planning, pricing and promotion. You yourself know like pricing and promotion optimizations are really, really hard problems to solve and it's so critical for business to run. And assortment planning is the other, which is like NP hard problem if we think about it, right? So assortment kind of problem kind of thing. So these are the these are some of the supply chain related problems at different nodes like retailer node, distributor node. So all of these nodes uh, we have selected and we are solving that those problems in a self-serve manner, right? So that's, uh, and, and it has been all templatized to a, to a place and it, it's, it's, it's gonna go on to a longer time, but today it is templatized to a scale, to a larger scale where a person can come, really uh, connect, do a data connection and, uh, you know, with just a, uh, less than two minutes of input, right? Data tagging and column tagging. He can go ahead and uh, like run the execute the auto machine learning platform to realize uh, some of the results and go ahead and take certain decisions. So that's the idea, fundamental idea of building this. So today I talk to a lot of customers when I talk to them, then there are two major constraints that they feel. First is obviously the problem itself, like the problems are complicated. In order to solve those problems, they need, you know, very strong data science, personal, like yourself, myself kind of thing over there to be able to understand them and solve them. And secondly, they also, uh, yeah, I mean, a data scientists are costly in India, right? So, I mean, we, we, we target the mid-size, like we are more towards the small to mid-size organizations, right? Uh, basically, that's where, that's, that's where the main, uh, main problem lies. And that's where we are trying to approach people over there. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, a lot of problems lies over there and, and whenever they, get a quotation of solving a problem, then there is a lag of one year into it. So how do we bring that to, let's say a week, less than a week to be able to start solving? So that's the fundamental thing. Awesome, awesome. So basically, uh, True gradient, gradient is an auto ML solution for supply chain optimization, pricing and many other problems. And I can relate to it because there was a uh, point in time in our career where both Ankur and me, we were solving similar kind of problems in uh, Walmart. So, and uh, what Ankur has done, he has applied his deep understanding of these supply chain problems and his automated ML system designing expertise into this framework. So we, I will talk more about how the interactions with client goes and all, but before that, why don't uh, you Ankur give a demo of the offerings of True Gradient? It will be really helpful to understand what the platform that you have built offers. Absolutely. So uh, may I share my screen and, you know, just uh, uh, go through the demo? Yes, I yes. Think, uh, 
perfect so i'm i'm going to be sharing my screen over here perfect so this is true gradient uh, this is our website true gradient.ai right over here so a person needs to come to here and sign in right over uh, into into our into the platform and here we go i'm going to the demo instance so this is our demo instance and this will lead us to the platform wherein all the solutions all the templates has been designed and kept uh, kept in a particular manner over here so these are the six problems which i just touched about which we are having at this point of time the so demand planning inventory planning assortment planning pricing and promotion and there is a fundamental problem that we had realized image processing there are a couple of customers whom we are talking to image processing is more around uh, to be able to identify the offline uh, sessions like offline data around footfall uh, because a lot of retailers have now started installing cameras into the stores so uh, to be able to detect the occupancy level at a category level kind of thing so that's what the image processing uh, module is about so let me give you an experience of one of the problem over here so let me go to an inventory planning and show how this typically works and how easily how easily any anybody can solve this so if you are anybody like even an analyst person or who, who doesn't understand data science too much it 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 can be tackled by uh, with them as well so let's say i'm taking inventory planning over here uh, inventory planning solution is mostly around demand forecasting trying to identify the days of inventory uh, which allows you to detect which your item in a particular store are you in risk for out of stock or wherein you are excess inventory right kind of thing and then you can obviously incorporate your supply chain constraints in the product and can be uh, can be applied to it so you can go ahead and use the template out here then there are multiple options you can see like the entire data engineering process has also been automated over here such that you just need to uh, you can say do some data connection right over here to be able to feed the data to the module or let's say if you want to try a very simple proof of concept right then you can even feed in any data set which you you might have so let's say i feed in a data over here uh, uh, it can be any data uh, uh, so i am just feeding in a data to this it goes you can view the data set right over here that what kind of data set it is add data set the moment you add the data set it just add to it you have to name the experiment so let's say i name it as demo right over here then it comes to the tagging data set so there the uh, uh, the questions or the guidance start with respect to how you want to approach this problem the so first thing is about tagging the data set because there is a fundamental knowledge that needs to exist in the user so it's like what is the date uh, you know like what is the date of the column that you want to use so this is the inventory problem so firstly it will solve the demand and then it will write some inequalities and optimization to be able to solve for the inventory optimization so you can have a look at the data over here and see what is the format as an example here we can see the date format is uh, d m y y y so if i feed then you can see this got corrected similarly you have to feed in what is the target metric target metric means what is your uh, what is the uh, uh, what is it that you want to predict right granularity is about which particular level you want to do the prediction so let's say you want to do a brand sq level prediction so you can a brand dc level prediction so you can go ahead and feed in the granularity as much as you would then there is a driver which is more around inventory right which particular inventory so here you have stock on hand data which is a mandatory thing to put because that's how you will solve the inventory problem and this is the current stock on hand and this is the demand so based upon these two you run certain inequality to be able to that's why automel uh, does that by itself and determine what is the right date there are some uh, optional tags as well so you can have some certain more inventory related tags right and uh, it can exist or can, might not exist as well so some of the things related to uh, let's say if you have some in, uh, more inventory dimensions related information uh, or any other dimensions that you would have that you want to pass into the information right uh, as an information things like holiday feature uh, pricing promotion so all of these because a lot of factors might influence your uh, like your forecast or the inventory that you are solving once you have done the data tagging this the data tagging then you go and add the context right over here so in this you have two options to fill in the form, in the in a in a way of form the forecasting details right over here wherein you feed about what particular time frame you want to forecast uh, frequency like monthly weekly forecast right and some of the optimization details again these optimization optimization details 
are also defined based upon the type of customers as well. So there will be certain customers who will have uh, their their own optimization, like inventory optimization norms, and we are more than happy to feed that uh, the way they would wish to. Once you have done that, then you go ahead and submit, and then you can execute the run right over here to be able to, for, for kicking off the auto machine learning. So once you execute at the backend, which is AWS for us, it, ident it looks at the type of data, it looks at the type of algorithm, right? Run simulations to be able to identify which type of algorithm needs to run. And then it executes the run and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, I mean, it will take, it, it takes depending upon data, uh, the time that it has to take. Once you have run that, right? Over there, then there is a dashboard which gets generated, right? So let me show you one of the dashboards of, let's say, of fashion D2C right over here. So firstly, it generates a case summary, right? What, what type of, uh, uh, like what type of data it was, like what type of problem you were solving. Then you have four other tabs wherein you go to the forecast summary. So this forecast summary is around, let's say I did a run right over here. So this allows me to understand uh, the forecast, right? Forecast level. So this is the historical data. And right here, you can see uh, on the on the right hand side, the, the, uh, the forecast data that has been generated. Now you can go ahead and make some changes as well. If you, you can deep dive and see that which particular item, how did the forecast happen for different types of categories and so on. And this particular, this is like an oscillator. You can even add different types of features, right? So let's say if you had a stock on hand as well, so you can you can add a stock on hand and see that how has stock on hand changed with respect to time and, and respectively how the change, right? So this is more around the, it's called a feature volume oscillator. This is called a demand pattern oscillator actually over here. And here you have accuracy, bias, month over month change, YOY, predicted units. Then you have a drill down view where you can go ahead and this is more for the demand planning perspective where you can go ahead and see, sort the data that where is my accuracy not great, where is the accuracy good, accuracy, bias, forecast, last period gap. Like last period gap is more around just the last time frame to this time frame percent gap. And similarly, YOY. This is like last year to this year's gap. Then we have a uh, scenario planning. This is, this is a place wherein you uh, try to identify because our algorithm, when the auto ML runs, it's a function of three things. First is the demand, the machine learning, which is like the, and the deep learning formulation, which is optimization over the data to be able to generate prediction. Second is the simulation, which allows you to learn certain sensitivities, which we call like all the exogenous features, like the pricing, promotion, uh, holiday events, all of those events, it will try to, it will generate the sensitivities. That means that if you make 10% change to the price, how does the quantity changes, right? So as an example, this is what the scenario planning layer is. On the X axis over here is the forecast and Y axis is the elasticity, right, over here. So as an example, if I look at this particular item, 11001038 particular item, it says price velocity as negative 1.03, right? So it means that if you make 10% change to the price of this item, you would expect a 10% uh, improvement in sale is what this particular number means over here. Then you also have, like you can go ahead, select different dimensions, right over there at a dimension level, see how your elasticities have, you know, what, what are the elasticities, different types of elasticities that are existing right over here and take certain decisions. So this allows you to identify what are the items wherein you can invest more. So the second quadrant is called cash calls, as you can see, wherein your forecast is less, less and your elasticity is high, as an example, right? So that allows you to give you an opportunity of what should be the amount and what should be the right, uh, like what should be the, which item should you be investing to be able to generate more ROI over. Now, now comes your inventory planning uh, area, wherein you talk about trying to identify on, again, here X axis is your forecast and Y axis is your days on inventory, right? So you can see to understand it very lightly. On the second quadrant is low sales, high days on inventory, right? Which means that it requires clearance because your item is not selling out, but your inventory has been sitting since a long, long time and it's going to sit for a longer time in a predictive fashion, right? So you need to apply some clearance over here and uh, and then to be able to, what should be the right amount of clearance or the markdown that you should be applying uh, uh, is something which you can seek help from the scenario planning where you had learned elasticity to be able to determine, right? So this is just one module 
as an example uh, uh, to to present uh, right over here to be able to show that how the auto ml formulation works how the product works over here so yes that's that's uh, that's the issue over to you so this is how uh, this is how our, our product is uh, shaped at this point of time and similarly we have like six uh, other uh, five other modules as well that solve the respective problems thanks and good that's a very neat and clean offering where like uh, once a client comes their whole supply chain optimization is automated and from the same dashboard they are able to create models as per their needs the intelligence as per their needs they don't need, they don't need to know what the ml model is behind and assume that since it will uh, automatically find out which is the best model and give them the best results and those results are also appearing in the dashboard where where the key highlights they need to focus on and as well as the main oscillators there's this pretty neat and clean offering so yeah so that's few questions like in the image processing side what are the offerings that are planned or which you are providing so currently in on the image processing we are working with one customer who is providing us uh, uh, like data set around so they have installed heat sensors at different places so when you enter a mall or when you enter a retail store so typically it is divided into different zones right based upon the type of uh, uh, data it is right over there uh, uh, based upon the type of store it is and then one of the things which is very important is to be able to identify the occupancy level at a given point of time so that they can understand that which is the area where traction is more versus which is the area where traction is less so we are working one of the customer wherein at a temp time level like at the hourly level we are identifying right during the day that what is the occupancy at different zones which allows the assortment placement to happen better for us to be able to determine where the footfall is higher and hence what should be the uh, the amount that or what should be the item uh, which should we should you should be uh, planning for that particular place so this is one type of use case the second use case is also one of our customers whom we are working with the energy hvac uh, kind of thing wherein uh, you you enter malls or any brigade uh, like we work area or those kind of so there are uh, there are different types of uh, ac like centralized acs which are installed right now uh, uh, the the ac control needs to happen based upon the people who are there into it right so again the, uh, those types of we work installs the heat sensors to be able to collect heat images and which allows you to understand at a given point of time what is the occupancy which uh, which can trigger uh, your uh, change in the temperature right like uh, you should be maintaining what optimal temperature based upon the occupancy so this is the second use case which we are solving with our customers very yeah. interesting very interesting so that leads to my another question like when you were working in a professional career uh, there must be the product and business stakeholders that you might be interacting with but here now that you are directly interacting with the clients and trying to bring more business and as you were explaining the problems every client has different set of problems so how interesting right. is yeah. this and how challenging is this and how different is this, is this from your past experience of professional career actually this is the the loveliest part of it i will tell you because what happens in my past one year of my entrepreneurship journey right i mean i i think that as a professional as a feed like as as a person who needs to i mean the the, the understanding to learn has gone many fold times the reason being that i talk to every week i talk to three to four new customers different types of business right i try to do my due diligence to be able to learn it to understand the uh, problem Uh, well and when i'm talking to a person like i was talking to one of the uh, one of the cpg customers sometime back right and this guy has been in in that cpg world since 22 years just imagine 22 years he was doing the similar kind of thing a different role but yeah in the same business right over there when i'm talking to him with my one hour even one two hours of my study it's a phenomenal learning for me that you know even these are the problems which exist right over there and then uh, uh, that that also allows you allows us to become iq levels also just you know starts enhancing because you have to be intelligent enough to be able to answer questions at that point of time and be able to understand what is the question that is being asked so it is it is just it has just started developing my business knowledge more right and it's very very different from uh, what i used to do in the past i will say like from this angle because there i used to know the people i used to know the type of problems i'm going to be talking about here it's more around informed you right at the same and the same day i might talk to a restaurant business i might talk to a distributor i might talk to a fashion business so like a, a, a entire paradigm shift happens in one meeting to another meeting which is which is lovely at the same point of very challenging i would say 
uh, I need to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, like what the other co-founders also uh, also on their toes to be able to learn about them and be able to, you know, support us together for answering questions. So, yeah, it's a great question, by the way. Yeah, this is one of the big challenges. Very interesting, Ankur. And Ankur, like after seeing this video, many of the potential clients or people might be interested in this offering. So what is the best way they can reach out to True Gradient? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we are on our website, we have uh, somebody can like go to the website and like just write the name and if we can, if, uh, if they can fill a form uh, to just the email ID, if, if they can fill, then it automatically comes to us and we provide the uh, the registration, the demo instance to, to them. So it's a very easy process wherein uh, like somebody reaches out to the website and then we allow them to go through uh, like uh, provide them the demo ac access and they can you know try their own models as well or try their own types of data set and try it out from there so that is where uh, we have linkedin presence as well like we do a lot of marketing over linkedin as well so over linkedin also uh, like you know it's it's it's, it's, a, it's more convenient uh, uh, like one of the other convenient way over linkedin also if somebody reaches out to over our page to get in then uh, we we do provide the access from from there as well so that's that's the two ways which I would propose at this point of time uh, to do. In, in the coming time, like in another, uh, like a month or so, we are going to do a self-registration as well. Somebody who can come to the website can do a self-registration and try it out by themselves as well. Yeah. Sure, sure. And uh, so, and what's the future vision? Like what all, what all services will get added to the platform and with the upcoming generative AI, what more functionalities do you plan to incorporate in the tool? Absolutely. I think uh, transformer models are very, very uh, like but excellent models is what I feel, right? Uh, a lot of things that we are doing at this point of time, even in another one month, what we are adding is uh, is basically, I mean, open AI, just like a Pandas open AI came as an example, very basic to start off with, right? What it allows you to do, I was just showing the dashboards, right? Over there, even at Amazon, while I was, uh, I, I uh, like I I had gone for a conference wherein I was a keynote speaker in Seattle last year during September. So the the talk just next to me was around how you can use transformer models to be able to automate the process of asking a chatbot. Like you ask the question over here that hey I want high price elasticity items right wherein there is a chance of liquidation right which I should be doing. So just ask this question and you end up getting the answer to that in the form of data set. So this is what we are adding over here so that uh, playing with the dashboard becomes more conversational than it is uh, than 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 being uh, uh, like figuring out what to do with this particular data. So we're going to be setting out like 25 uh, like 25 to 30 questions over there click and know them and secondly uh, you can even write and uh, yeah the transformer models are going to work and figure them out that what should be the right answer. So that's that's the logical thing which we are planning. And it's, it's going to come very soon to our module. Very interesting roadmap, Ankur. So Ankur, uh, we talked about uh, how you started with the data science field and your experience in the professional journey where you worked for various companies and how you got started with True Gradient and what are the awesome offerings that the tool provides. In the last phase of this talk, I want to... Uh, uh, deep dive into some of the recent happenings around, like mainly the generative AI, with Chat GPT and Bard kind of models being there, it which are which are pretty good at summarizing the internet knowledge and providing to us. And also with generative AI, uh, where the image and video uh, algorithms have evolved a lot, that it's hard to differentiate between an actual image or a uh, algorithm generated image. So how do you see this generative AI playing out and how will it change the world? What is your take on it? I think generative AI is really changing the world, the way people used to uh, think about and uh, all uh, like in terms of how people used to think about different types of problems, right? Uh, it It is enabling. So firstly, I will maybe start off with how it is helping me as an example, like significantly, because when I started myself, like not only I, my founders, all my co-founders, when we started, we are not experts of doing marketing, not experts of, you know, creating the best content. We have to raise, we are raising funds and everything, right? I think, uh, like, I would say that chat GPT kind of thing has really helped us in terms of what should the right marketing content that we should be putting on, on board, right? Which people will love and people will come to, right? 
because they are very tricky things to understand right how do you get your right type of i create your icps well uh, i was in dubai a month back we were launching our product in a conference called teamless right the entire preparation of that uh, i wouldn't say entire but yeah 70% of the preparation of that was uh, with the help of chat gpt trying to understand how do you go how how do you present yourself what are the conversations do you have because we had really 16 hours Uh, at the World Trade Center, Dubai, to talk to our customers, we talk to fifty customers, sixty customers over there. So, what type of content do you talk to with different types of people? So, these kinds of information has really been aggregated in the chat by Chat GPT on the internet, which helps a company like us to understand it well on the first day. Secondly, uh, transformer models. I have believed, right? Like in two thousand nineteen itself, I I was working over at Samia as well. I was working. My attention was. Uh, attention is all you need is that famous paper right so i am very close to that paper i have studied that paper multiple times i always forget that paper because it's a hard paper to remember uh, so that's what i have made notes written all the all the mathematics properly so i was trying to implement that into time series as well like how do you implement those kinds of framework in time series as well and uh, and uh, yes like the kinds of uh, type of, uh, of of algorithms like transformer kind of algorithm or generative ai kind of thing allows you to make your data more uh, i would say diverse and your data more learnable for the algorithm right because certain times you just need to simulate your data for certain types of customers and feed that into algorithm to make it more powerful so that is the second way in which i feel the world is going to uh, use uh, the uh, the chat gpt or the transformer models uh, from the data generation perspective itself right one is about image and conversational generation that is one phase which is which is at a particular stage now how do you generate the right data for a business and really use that to be able to seek decisions is the next step is what uh, uh, what i feel and which we are also trying to incorporate into gradient as well yeah if that makes sense yeah so <laughs> completely agree and even i was watching a video of karpathe with lex friedman and he was saying the same thing that uh, transformer is the most evolutionary architecture that we have produced and uh, also the ability of this transformer model to generalize for images for text is phenomenal and uh, and and about this technologies like chat gpt and bard the most interesting thing that i find is i am a content creator i use it for content creation someone may use it for marketing like in your case while some for a learner they are using it for educational purpose so everyone is using as per their need and finding reaping the benefits out of it that is the most interesting part of it that one technology is helping everyone in all their different fields even the medical professional they are using it for their research so that's the most interesting and uh, sophisticated thing which i like the most about this chat gpt how a sophisticated model architecture has made the life easier for people from different background people from different professions and so on absolutely i totally agree abhishek yeah so ankur uh, any parting notes you have for the data trek viewers absolutely yeah i think uh, firstly thank you for you know building this community and the kind of videos that you have been creating since past like 2 years to and a half years is phenomenal and i feel it's going to be like significantly helpful for not only for the starters but somebody like me you know who used to who who i love learning and you know like these are the best ways to learn uh, to what we are as uh, or, or what we do every day and day out with respect to the problem solving and all i would say that uh, one of the most fundamental thing as i was saying previously as well is to be able to go back to your basic go back to pick up a notebook pick up a pen uh today is the world wherein this is far ahead from 10 years back when we were trying to learn ai ml right today you we have all the uh, all the academy are available right the professional courses are com- coming to learn it uh and, and and you know like you just go ahead i think neural network is what i feel is the ground breaking thing in the world right uh, uh like that's what my personal belief is uh try to understand the neural networks and the basic algorithms really well uh get the basics right is what i would say uh and uh, and yeah i mean and i think if if, if the basics are right then the all the algorithms are just being followed by by that so and even before going to that engineering like d- data structures and algorithms basic data structures and algorithms is 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 the hour of the need for for us to be able to understand these uh, uh these 
uh, these fundamental concepts that we we are applying in the machine learning world today. So yeah, all the best for uh, like I, I would like to wish all the best to all the data track listeners and the viewers as well. And uh, and yeah, feel free to reach out to me as well if if uh, if, if required. More than happy to talk to people and you know it's it's a learning for me. Thanks, thanks, and good for those kind words. We will definitely have more such sessions around True Gradient and maybe just deep dive into some concept or data science, new architectures or new technologies that will come in time. Thanks for your time. Yeah, and just to add, and the last thing that I would add is like, yeah, I mean, definitely go ahead and try True Gradient as well if you wish to. And if you have to have some data, you want to see benchmark the results or, you know, have feedback for us, then, yeah, I mean, more than happy to provide the demo instance up, like wherein you can really run the advanced neural network algorithms uh, on your tips and see how the results come over there. Exactly. Yeah. Like if someone is solving a forecasting problem, maybe they are building a model. Try with True, True Gradient, which is an auto ML platform, which has incorporated tons of models in inside, inside it and just compare, do a benchmarking and you will understand the power that True Gradient brings. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Thank you and good for your time. Bye. Thanks, Abhishek. Bye-bye.